In light of the Mohammed bin Ziba tragedy and related incidents over the past few years, we felt it necessary to ask the question, is getting into contact state becoming just a little too dangerous? The answer is varied between contestants and the press. Bodybuilding has changed in many ways over the years. One of the most drastic changes has been in the area of content separation. In the 50s and early 60s, nobody bothered to diet down to an extremely low body fat. They merely entered contests as they came along. A leaner look became more prominent in the 70s. And by the 1980s, the contest diet and constant aerobics were part of every competitor's preparation regimen. As the demand for a more ripped appearance increased, bodybuilders began to do the more drastic measures to achieve this ideal. Casting out backstage or on stage, trips to the hospital, even death are becoming commonplace. It seems the sport may be becoming too dangerous for its own athletes. The quality of bodybuilding has improved tremendously over the past couple years. You know, from a fan's viewpoint, that's great. You're going to sit in your seat, and these freaks are getting bigger, and they're getting harder, and they're more vascular, and they're veinier. Now, let's look at the other side of the picture. What does it take to get there? And the problem is, as an athlete, when someone else is doing something to get bigger than you, and veinier than you, and and in the end result, finishing higher than you in a contest, you take the next step to surpass him. And what is that next step? Well, for one thing for sure, it's awful unhealthy. We've had one athlete die. We've seen other athletes collapse after contests. And it's becoming uh, being done on a regular basis now. It's not something happening once every two or three years. Veteran competitor Vince Taylor, a victim of his own contest preparations many times, feels that nothing will change so long as judging standards remain as they are and expectations are so high. As long as the criteria is set as high as it is, the standards are received. The competitors have to be at a certain hardness, degree of quality. You know, you have to go beyond me to bring out that type of look. And that look itself, itself each year, then yes, it becomes a dangerous zone because what we're doing for our body to a normal diet is already in a dangerous zone. Dehydration type movements and not drinking water and not getting your body enough fat. All these things count up. So this is a healthy sport, but the criteria which we take the sport down for the competition is on the edge. Although he's just now beginning to enter the program, Paul Gillett is outspoken on the issue of current trends in physique competition. I mean, it's becoming a little too extreme in terms of uh, the criteria of uh, getting shape what is considered that we see. And now it's um you go on stage and a, someone a guy may play second and you say, Well why did I play second? And they'll say, Well you you were holding water. Your body is made up of water. So there's only so much water you can get out of your body. I think you have to try to find out who do you point the finger at, uh, the athletes or the judges. Some bodybuilders, like Paul Quadzilla de Mayo, wish for a return to the healthier days of old in bodybuilding. Paul's old school style of training and dieting, learned in Boston, provides the foundation to his thought. The sport has grown so much, and it has, you know, more and more achieved, like, you know, readiness and thickness and muscle. The sport has grown since the 70s. There's a lot more things going on. So I, I wish very much all the time, but, you know, that, that was then, this is now. Fellow national level heavyweight competitor Gary Thornton also feels that today's grit look is a lot more dangerous. After losing in the California Championship last year, Gary questions whether being in top condition actually does make a difference. Back in the 50s and 70s, the main consensus was size, but now uh, with you to draw the line in bodybuilding. Um, I personally think that individuals are going to the extreme. Condition is one thing, but where do you draw the line? Uh, as opposed to years ago, individuals can get away with this, or what we consider a smooth look now, but now it's like, I don't want to risk my health in order to win a trophy or get some recognition. Many bodybuilding fans never realize the manipulations of diuretics, water deprivation, and many other drastic and sometimes deadly measures that the top amateurs and pros routinely indulge to get a near transparent symbol that no bodybuilder of the night can win without. However, as in any sport, bodybuilding standards will only go forward, not backwards. In the last days before a physique competition, 
will more likely than not continue to see athletes putting their health at risk for a sport. For Muscle Magazine, I'm Chris Adams.